afternoon. My name is Oliver Westmoreland. I'm an OSC registered for Level 3 advisor and I'm a consultant with GSN Immigration. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you can continue to watch our extremely interesting videos about UK visa and immigration advice. Today's topic is fiancé uh, slash proposed civil partner visas. Um, I'll explain to you what it is in case you don't know. Um, you're engaged to be married uh, or perhaps you're engaged uh, to get into a civil partnership with somebody. Let me make uh, the terminology clear. Fiancé is for the traditional uh, man and woman relationship. Proposed civil partner is the modern term that's been created to the equivalent of fiancé for civil partnerships, same-sex relationships. So. Um, the visa that will be applied for will be either a fiancé visa or a proposed civil partner visa. The way that it is, the way that it works, is that the two people are engaged, either for marriage or civil partnership. Um, they haven't got married yet, but they're uh, seriously thinking about it, um, we hope. Uh, the fiancé's uh, proposed civil partner visa works in the way that the person from outside the UK, the applicant, can come to the UK uh, to join or be with or uh, be associated with the sponsor, uh, the other party. Uh, now, of course, it's a funny subject. They may or may not be wanting to live with the sponsor. It depends on how you are, what your beliefs are, um, what religion you are, and so on and so forth. But one way or another, uh, they come to the UK with the visa. The visa is only issued for six months. Within that six month period, the applicant and the sponsor are supposed to get married or enter into civil partnership. I say supposed to because that's how it's supposed to work. If something goes seriously wrong somehow, you can ask for an extension, but the expectation is that the marriage civil partnership will take place in that, within that six months. Once the marriage or civil partnership has happened, then the applicant can apply to switch their visa in the UK. They don't have to return home. They can apply to switch their visa in the UK to either a spouse visa or a civil partner visa. Uh, one of the things about fiancé proposed civil partner visa is that you cannot work. As soon as you switch to spouse visa or civil partner visa, then you can work in employment or self-employment, just like the sponsor, just like everybody else. Um, I have to say, uh, in some ways, perhaps, this is a very good scheme. I don't want to be too negative, as, as you can understand, but it sometimes happens. The person comes on the fiancé visa or proposed or partner visa, they get to know their, their, their sponsor a bit more and they think, hmm, maybe I don't want to do this after all. And they sort of go back home. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. But, you know, let's be realistic. Sometimes in life, you, you, you don't know how things are going to work out. That's what could happen. It's not exactly a probationary visa, probationary period. It's not exactly that. But if you're here as a fiancé, as a proposal or partner, you haven't yet got married. The expectation is that you will get married um, within six months, as I say. Uh, sometimes it doesn't happen, but I think in the great majority of cases, it does. If the marriage or civil partnership happens within the six months, then, as I say, uh, the switch can be made to the spouse visa or civil partner visa. This is granted for two and a half years. Something that you need to be aware of is when you apply for a fiancé proposal or partner visa, you have to do pretty much the same sort of things uh, as applying for a spouse visa. You have to pay um, a fairly adventurous uh, immigration application fee. You have to pay, you don't have to pay immigration health surcharge because the visa is for six months, only six months, but you do have to pay a hefty um, immigration fee for that. If you come from a country where there is a TB certificate requirement, you do have to get your TB certificate, although the visa is only for six months. So you have to do a lot of the same things. When you switch 
unfortunately, you have to pay yet another uh, large immigration fee, and this time you do have to pay the immigration health surcharge. So um, you, you might end up spending a lot of money. But I have to say that sometimes I've advised people who haven't been in the UK in their life very much, perhaps, or maybe never, you know, it's nice to be here for a few months to see if you like the weather, see if you like the culture, see if you feel happy, you know. So that, that's the way that the fiancé visa works. It's not the only way of doing things. There are other ways. Um, people sometimes get married and then they apply straight away for spouse visa or, or um, civil partner visa. Some people come to UK on a marriage visitor visa. There are different routes and different methods. That's how the fiancé proposed civil partner route works. Um, Mr. Shaw, I can see you've got a lot of questions bringing bring, bring them over. Please, please, please let me know. Sure. We do have quite a few questions and um, I'll start by one of the most um, frequently asked questions, which is, is there any specific time frame the couple needs to be in a relationship for before they apply for a fiancé visa? Well, I would say no, but uh, I don't want to make it sound easy. You have to provide strong and cogent evidence that it's a genuine uh, existing relationship, like with every type of partner visa application. Great. So if you've been in a relationship for two weeks, it doesn't look really very strong. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's no mathematical figure about time, though. Brilliant. <clears throat> Brilliant. Thank you. And um, if the applicant who is applying for a fiancé visa has been married before and um, they have a child from a previous relationship for which they have sole responsibility, can they also bring the child with them on a fiancé visa? Um, potentially, yes. Okay, thank you. And um, like you mentioned in, in your um, in, in your informational speech before, you said they don't need to pay the immigration health surcharge. Um, what happens if the applicant by any chance gets unwell and they need to attend the NHS? Can they use the NHS for free? Um, that's a very good question. They can certainly use GP for free. Uh, if they have a serious illness, they can certainly use um, accident and emergency. Okay, thank you. But if they so, so I would like to have my knee operation done now on NHS, they're, they're going to say no, or else charge you loads and loads of money. Okay, brilliant. So it's best to consult um, the hospital or the doctor before they go for any major operation. Uh, well, like I wouldn't go for major things. I mean, you can go to GP oh. if you get knocked down in the road accident um you, you know we're not like some countries that they will take you to hospital and treat you but if you wanted to have some sort of non-urgent operation maybe you could arrange to do it and get paid but it's not i wouldn't particularly recommend it i think it's going to complicate the issue sure another um situation which we come across quite a lot because today we live in the era where technology is used for most of the things um including meeting new partners online um, starting a relationship online, falling in love online. Tell me about it. <laughs> etc. So um, if if there is a couple who who fell in love online and they've decided to get married, but they've never met actually physically, can they also apply for this visa? Well, some philosophers and biologists and scientists might say it's impossible to truly fall in love online. But whatever the truth of that, the rule says you have to have physically met Maybe once, but you have to have physically met. When, when you see these words in the immigration rules, you must have met. It doesn't mean online, it means physically, in the same room. Oh. Okay, sure, thank you so much for clarifying that. And uh, we, we have a query from, from a gentleman who's in the UK currently on a fiancé visa, and uh, his marriage is going to take place in June. He would like to ask if he can sponsor his parents from back home to come and attend his marriage ceremony? As visitors? As visitors. Um, well, he can certainly try, yes. I mean, you know you know how difficult visa, visitor visa applications are sometimes, especially from some countries, but they're perfectly entitled. Uh, that, that's a good reason for a, a visitor visa. But of course, you have to meet all the various requirements for a visitor visa, but that could be a good reason for a visit, I would say. Okay, brilliant. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for um, doing this great, useful video with us. It's my pleasure. And we see you in the next one. See you soon.